Thank you. I now recognize my ranking member, Senator Moran. Uh, Chairwoman, thank you very much. I look forward to continuing to work with you as we have in the past on workforce issues, especially in aviation. Let me ask just a broad question, and maybe this is for Dr. Ludi or Dr. Utash, Mr. Ramathan, Ramanathan. Um, What's the difference between just encouraging STEM education uh, and encouraging aviation education? Um, so we, we spent a lot of time trying to convince uh, women, young students uh, for, to pursue degrees in science, mathematics, engineering, and research. Does that translate into something that matters to aviation, or does the educational focus need to be specifically toward aviation? Dr. Ludi, you have your head nodding with me. I, <laughs> um, uh, well, you know, to me, personally, it's the passion for aviation. I mean, there's something about aviation that hooks you in, you know, whether it's, you know, that first time you look up and see the airplane and you know uh, that's your dream and that's what you want to do. Um, I, I just see that in a, in a different way, probably a little bit of a bias for the aviation bug for me. Um, but in terms of recruiting and retention, I think it's critically important to think about it. Um, we know, for example, from research, that young women tend to self-select out of STEM programs. Um, they don't feel necessarily welcome in STEM programs. So I think it's really important in terms of outreach and education and some of the areas that we're talking about here that when we do outreach, we do it from a focus of aviation first, STEM second. If you lead with STEM, you're gonna have potentially self-selecting out women or young women from those programs. And that's not what hooks them in. You know, the research shows that what hooks young women into aviation, the number one um, response on a survey of women in aviation was passion for aviation, followed by the desire to be challenged. You know, that's where the hook is. So I think we lead with aviation because we wanna send the message that, um, you know, if you're not interested in STEM, aviation isn't for you, that's not what we wanna send. We want to let people know, get hooked on it, or you know, if you have the passion for it, um, there's a place for you. So there's a distinction? I believe so, yes. Yes, ma'am. I would add into that, I, I do think there's a distinction. But I think the other thing that's so critically important about this is young children, middle school children, they, don't know, they know what a pilot is, but they don't know what all the other things, you know, you think about um, at, at Alaska Airlines, all the people that make that plane fly, all the people it takes that's in that infrastructure. I don't think people really understand, young children don't really understand what those opportunities are. On a flight I was on yesterday, it was a 45 minute delay because a maintenance person needed to come fix something so that we could go in the air safely. That, we, we have to do a better job because the and, the, and the way it ties in, Senator Moran, to the STEM is that you do have to have some strong science and math skills to be successful. But I think leading with the passion, leading with the, leading with the awareness piece, and then building from there, um, I, th I think is a better way to encourage young people in this profession. Mr. Ramanathan, I think you said something about we lose uh, to other industries within the tech sector, aviation workers. Yeah, Senator, I um, concur with uh, some of the panelists' comments, Dr. Utash and Dr. Ludi. I think you need, you know, we like, you know, we're all passionate people in the sector and we like people, you know, to have passion in the aviation sector for sure. But STEM is a building block. I mean, I think the basics of physics, mathematics is a building block. So that definitely helps for somebody to be preparing for an aviation or aerospace professional. Having said that, I think the distinction is a lot of the STEM, you know, we, we do not have a problem in um, um, graduates coming out of, you know, uh, colleges or universities, but a lot of them are attracted to other sectors. So if it's a pure STEM person, could be attracted to other sectors, namely tech, if you will, that offers, as the survey showed, you know, from AIA, it offers higher compensation, flexible working models, and faster career progression versus a, you know, aerospace industry. So a pure STEM person could be you know, attracted to other sectors, whereas the aviation passionate STEM person could be more attracted to stay in the sector. Uh, thank you all for your answers. I'd highlight that uh, next month we'll help cut a ribbon in Atchison, Kansas on a museum honoring Amelia Earhart, uh, which I, yeah. and when we've changed out our statue, our state's statue in Statuary Hall uh, to Amelia Earhart. Uh, and again, those kinds of circumstances uh, Perhaps a history lesson allows us to capture 
uh, people to be interested, and in this case particularly women, to be interested in careers in aviation and aerospace. Uh, if you have suggestions how we can, they're going to focus a lot of attention at the museum on STEM, but if you can help us uh, figure out how we, based upon our conversation, how we make sure that that STEM that lends itself well to careers in aviation. Uh, I, I think one of the key areas is just put women in front of, um, you know, young people. I mean, have people that, that look like them as a part of the presentation and a, and a part of uh, the experience. So I think that can be a really powerful thing. It's the see it, be it experience, right? So, um, and, and, and as was mentioned, I think introducing a variety of areas of, of aviation occupations is important as well. So, um, Dr. Yeah, Ludi, uh, Atchison is only a short distance from Omaha. We <laughs> you bet. To see us. Absolutely. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I recognize.